Yeah, Midnight's Quirk? That's gonna be a no for me, dog. What is up, everyone? It is Dylan from Class 1A bringing you another My Hero Academia Vigilantes Breakdown. This week, we're gonna go over Chapter 103, Inhumanity. We open up back in the hospital with number six who has been apprehended. Detective Tsukiichi even manages to get the stun handcuffs on him before calling for Midnight to put the nail in the coffin with her quirk. Before Midnight can reach them, number six melts and contorts his body out of the cuffs. At this point, number six has his cells fused with the bomber quirk cells. So essentially he has mind control over those cells, which allows him to control the Anons. But if he has mind control over that and most of his body is made up of that same cell, then he can then manipulate those to just change his body however he wants. I think that's the thinking for this. At this point, he is far from human, and we get just a lot of body horror kind of in this chapter, which I'm a big fan of, so I really love it, but they just, they truly make him disgusting and gross at how he just like melts and contorts his body all over the place. Really horrifying stuff. Six then gives us the line, you want me dead? You should have aimed for the head. And his knuckles start glowing. Just super on the nose Thanos reference here. Absolutely love it. Throughout this fight, we keep getting a back and forth between six and two o'clock. Now, obviously two o'clock isn't there, but this shows us the hard split that he has between his rational clear thinking provided by his quirk and his enraged self outside of that quirk. I think this is gonna be the downfall for him for sure in the final fight. I think that's what they're setting up for here. You could see the real conflict between the two of two o'clock being super rational and whatnot and number six just being absolutely insane, kind of not wanting to think with him at this point. He's almost going against him. We also get more information about Koichi Shudigo Blam. Now it has a little bit of tracking, really buffing up the power level of that move. Two o'clock retreats outside of the hospital to regroup and Detective Sukuichi tells Koichi it's time to call all night. Koichi blasts out of the hospital with his new flying ability and two o'clock knows what's up. He has roughly a minute to snag pop and finish the job more than enough time for him. But Koichi suddenly lands back next to two o'clock, setting up for the final showdown. So the question is here, why is he coming back and not just calling for All Might? So number one, I think it's that his priority is just solely on Pop at this point. He, he loves Pop. He wants to save Pop. That is his mission at this point. And I think he knows just as well as number six that you know, he could just take Pop at any point before All Might even gets here. So he really wanted to be there to fight it and to stop it. He's the only one who can do it at this point. I also think he probably gave the message to someone else along the way. I think that's why he was gone for a little bit of the time. My initial thought is in Genium because, you know, of how fast he is. I think he gave it to some hero, you know, out there just to go and call All Might. He didn't want to do it himself, like I said, to save Pop. But I think the message is still getting out there. Just the question is who. So. I think they did this because they want to give us a little bit more of a clock to actually have this showdown in. Um, by doing this, I, it's going to be more than a minute, obviously, because people aren't going to be as fast as Koichi just flying straight to All Might. Um, because obviously by just flying there, you're going to get there the fastest way possible. But they want to give us a little bit more time, still have the confrontation, but still have that countdown in the back of where All Might could show up at any second. So that puts a ton of pressure on number six. So at this point, I think the story is starting to peter out just a little bit. We've been drawing this final fight out for just a really, really long time now, but I think it was important to do this. We needed a little bit more information on some of the quirks, mainly Koichi's just to build his quirk out a little bit, give us some more information about it, and also give us some insight into number six. I mean, towards the end, we see that line of how he doesn't want to be nameless and faceless anymore, which obviously is super far from the truth because, you know, he was grown in a lab, so he has like no name already. And after the fight with Endeavor, he has no face now. Like it just like completely melted off. So he's literally nameless and faceless. And I don't think he wants that. He wants the spotlight. He wants to be powerful. And I think Koichi is going to have to just deny that right here. So the question is, what is next for the series at this point? I think we're going to be getting the fight finally. I think the fight has to come next chapter. I, there's like very little they can do at this point to like skirt around it unless they have like a flashback or like a flash parallel to like another point in time. Um, but I don't think they would do that. I think, I think now is the time to have the fight, especially with the extra week long break that we just got previously. This fight is gonna be intense though. It is going to be a really good one. I think there is a couple key factors to think about for this fight. One, Koichi is really strong right now, and he is the prime example of what it means to go plus ultra. So expect some things just like out of left field, just throwing random things out of his pocket to deal with this. Number two, 
Number six is terrifying at this point. He is like, his power level, I would put it up there with some of the top villains in the main series itself. So I think even Deku, like if you were to step in at Deku's like current power level that's like super, super high, would have a hard time dealing with him. So it is going to be uh, a scary fight for Koichi nonetheless. But I think what's gonna be really important here is just picking him apart at his like psychological level. I think it's important not only to just like run him down like in terms of like running his quirk out but also getting his inner self to fight with each other get the rational part of his brain and get this enraged self part of his brain just to fight with each other to lead into an opening to actually take him down i think that's the key here and not only is koichi going to do it but he's also going to be leaning on his friends and other heroes uh, at the hospital to actually do this regardless this is going to be an incredibly hype fight you know, mark it down in your calendars, get the event tickets out there, because it is going to be an absolute banger of a fight. And I have full expectations that this chapter coming up is just going to be 10 out of 10, finish the series in a perfect way. It is going to be wonderful. So if you want to keep up to date with all that on Vigilantes, the main series, the main anime that's out right now that's incredible, then subscribe here at Class 1A, because Class 1A is the place to be if you're a My Hero Academia fan. We go over everything you can possibly imagine and even more. So make sure you subscribe, leave a comment down below, let me know if you enjoyed this chapter, and I will see you all next class.